So I just went to the Alps with my parents and I took this photo. Ah, such a nice memory of our trip. Except it wasn't golden hour. It was midday. The entire right side of the picture, well, I never photographed it. The mountains weren't that big and we didn't even pose the three of us together in the same picture. Every important moment in history has been captured with a photograph. A photo has always been the proof that something happened, the truth. But things are about to change. And yep, yeah, it's gonna be f***ing weird. I just got this phone. This is the Pixel 9 Pro XL. And this phone is a preview of what's about to come in the way we all capture the world with our phones. Because if everything you capture is a lie, then what even is a photo? But before we even get to this and what's gonna happen in the future, I hate to break it to you, but the photos you already take with your phone are not real. I need to thank CleanMyMacX for supporting this video. So I just got back from Bali for a month of surfing, driving around, sand everywhere, tossing my stuff in a new place every two days. And after all this, a ritual I cannot skip is sitting down and cleaning all my tech gear. You should never trust anyone with a computer that looks like this. But cleaning your computer on the outside is only half the job. And for the other half, there's Clean My Mac X. It does the dirty work of deleting gigabytes of unneeded files and install unused apps. It makes your Mac safer and more organized. Thanks to the menu app, Clean My Mac X gives you all you need to know about your Mac's performance in one place. Battery stats, CPU and memory usage, network performance, everything is here. Because you should also never trust anyone whose computer looks like this. So now all you need to do is clean the outside and let Clean My Mac X take care of the rest. You can check out Clean My Mac X with the link in the description to get a 7 day free try. Okay, so look at these photos. Very cool, right? Well, these photos are from photographer Ansel Adams, and they are over 80 years old. And if your 2013 vacation photos look like crap, and these still look incredible, it's because these were taken with this, a large format film camera. Digital cameras have a set number of pixels that limit the resolution. And this is why you can watch the last Christmas music video from 1984 in insane 4K quality, but music videos from the 2000s look terrible. Because this was shot on film, and we have the original film reels for it. This camera works by exposing a ton of light onto a huge plate. The bigger the plate, the better the quality, the more space you need between the lens focal point and the actual plate, the sensor. And you've already figured out the problem with this. It's huge. And since we decided that it's not acceptable to take photos in the club with this, cameras got smaller, medium format, 35mm, and then we switched to digital. But the concept is still the same. So what happens when you need to fit this inside the phone? The problem is the lens. You cannot change this distance, so all you can do is make everything, including the sensor, smaller. And as we know, small sensor, less light, and also lower quality. And this is the biggest problem the smartphone cameras always had to face. They cannot change physics, so they decided to cheat physics with software. Because whenever you hit that shutter button, you don't even realize the amount of stuff that goes on inside your smartphone. Light is captured by a grid of diodes with color filters on top, to capture a color each. This produces something called Bayer image, which looks like a mosaic. So an interpolation algorithm guesses the value of the missing pixels, which by the way means that two-thirds of the image is extrapolated by a computer and not actually captured by the sensor. Then because the sensor is very small, it can capture very little light, so we need to boost the gain of the image digitally. But this introduces noise, so now we need a denoising algorithm to denoise the image. But this algorithm makes the image softer, so a sharpening algorithm now needs to fix that. This is not even half of what happens anytime you take a photo. So the photos you already take with your phone are, well, a lie. They are a result of hundreds of decisions from Samsung, Apple or whoever about how the image should look and how all this processing is calibrated. Despite phones from different companies even using the same physical sensor, the processing is what makes a difference. So up to here, all of this is to get something good out of a sensor that has no business being this good. But at some point we decided that having a camera bump is okay. I mean, look at the camera bump on my new Pixel 9. I can base jump off this thing. This means we have more space so we can finally put in a bigger sensor. So hey, good news, you can stop with all the computational photography. It's good now. You can stop. Please, S stop. Well, we didn't stop. Even with bigger sensors that don't need it, we kept going even more hardcore with computational photography. 
The Pixel 3 introduced Night Sight that allows to take photos at night by compensating for camera shift. HDR Plus works by taking multiple exposures, matching them one on top of the other, and merging them digitally. Portrait mode started faking the bokeh effect by adding digital fake blur. All of this makes for the very recognizable smartphone look of photos. I went and took the same photo with my phone and with a regular camera. And you can clearly see how super sharpened and processed the phone photo looks. Computational photography went way beyond making up for a small sensor. Now it's a race for more processing and more features. Face and Blur combines multiple images to pick the one where the face is not blurry. Real tone identifies subjects and adjusts skin tone. The Huawei P30 Pro had a moon mode, where if you take a picture of the moon, it looks like it superimposes a stored picture of the moon in high quality instead of your photo. So the photos we take today are already far from reality. They're processed again and again, with the purpose not to make them real, but to make them look good. All of this is already normalized and it's happening already. But then I got my hands on the Pixel 9. And that's when I realized that things are about to change. And I'm not the only one. See, in addition to all the processing that we just saw, here there's something called Magic Editor. Did you frame the shot wrong? No problem. Hit a button and the phone will suggest you a better framing and generate with AI the part that you never captured. Don't like that light falling the way? Tap it and it's gone. Don't like the fact that you're here and you want to be here? No problemo. Want to make the mountain more impressive? Done. Were you too lazy to wake up at sunrise to take that cool shot during golden hour? Well, there's an option for that. You can even generate things that were never in the picture. Select an area, type what you want, hit reimagine, and boom. Now, I know what you're thinking. We already have AI image generation, and we've had Photoshop for 40 years. This isn't anything new. And you're right, but this is different from all the other image generators like Midjourney, because it starts from a photo that you take, and most importantly, this is not presented as AI image generation, but rather as a normal photo editing tool in your camera app. Now, faking images has been around for more than 100 years. These are the Cottingly pictures from 1901, and they led many people to believe that fairies exist. This is an ad from Dove where they show how image editing makes for impossible beauty standards. And this is from 2003. Manipulating photos, manipulating reality has always been around. But the difference here is just how easy this is for anyone with no experience to do. Let me prove it to you. I want to do three changes to this photo. Remove the trash can, move me forward, and add more grapes in my hand. So I've asked a friend of mine to do all these changes with the magic editor. And remember, this is the first time he uses it. I'm gonna do the same changes the old way in Photoshop, and let's see how long it takes. So, yeah. This is not another camera feature. This is big. And rest assured, other phone manufacturers will start implementing some version of this in the near future. In 2016, Nikon held a black and white photography contest, and this was the winning image. A very cool shot. Well, it turned out to be fake. The guy added the plane with Photoshop. So, what's the problem? I can still enjoy the picture, it's nice, it's a cool picture. But knowing that the plane is not real, that it's not reality, makes it less valuable. The whole premise of photography is that it's the skill of capturing reality. And well, this is changing. The team at Google that built this camera said that their goal is not to capture reality, what you have in front of you, but to help you capture the memory of that moment, the feeling of what's in front of you. And I know it sounds weird, but they might have a point. This photo of me and my parents isn't real. We never posed the three of us together. It's assembled with the Pixel Add Me feature. But in 10 years, when I look back at this day, I would be happy to have this picture, this memory, even though it's not a representation of reality. But there's a big problem with this. Today on my Pixel, you have to go in and manually use these fancy AI tools by yourself, by clicking edit and choosing what you want. It's actually kind of tucked away in the interface. But imagine a phone that does this automatically, without you even choosing all this. That makes the mountain a bit more impressive, that reframes the shot, that tweaks the time of day. I have a feeling that most people wouldn't be bothered by this. Actually, they would like it more. Their new phone's camera would seem so good compared to the competition, even though the photos they're taking are not actually capturing reality. They're probably not even photos anymore. We're at the point where soon this won't be a camera anymore. So what if we acknowledge it? I think that there is a place for capturing memories and using AI for that, especially because 
let's be clear, most people are not good at taking pictures. And if you ask someone to take a picture of you in front of a monument, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So what if you have a camera to capture reality in the best possible quality and keeping it real? And a memories camera with all the AI bells and whistles not to capture reality, but the feeling of reality in a specific moment without needing to be a photography pro. But even in that case, I do wonder if at some point you would just decide, you know what? But something that's very real are the weird stories behind the tech you use every day and that no one knows about. Like how the PlayStation almost never existed because Nintendo and Sony actually made a console together. And you can learn all about these in this video right here. I'm Enrico and I'll see you in the next one.